All right. Okay, so our second speaker for the session is uh, Kang Wu from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Take it away. All right. Uh, thanks a lot for organizing this seminar and uh, also uh, thanks for the chance to speak here. So uh, uh, my talk would be uh, something uh, similar to the last one, but uh, we're working on a, a discrete model and uh, also uh, the models would be in a fairly generic setting. So this is based on the uh, work with the uh, Partha Day, also at UAC. So uh, here's some definition of the spin glass models. Uh, we, we consider the configuration that's running from this n-dimensional hypercube where the each size take plus, mi uh, plus minus one values. Uh, it's uh, different from the previous one. It's taken from the n-dimensional sphere. And uh, we consider this uh, n-dimensional uh, we would consider this a Hamiltonian, which is a, the Gaussian random fields is defined on this n-dimensional hypercube. Uh, this uh, the covariance of this Gaussian random fields is given this very nice form. This uh, where this C function is a so-called uh, structure function, which uh, which is going to be used to define the different spin glass models. It's normalized the uh, um, inner product of the configurations as uh, uh, as uh, the overlap, it's overlap with the replicas. It's uh, some sort of a distance notion uh, for the configurations you sampled from this n-dimensional hypercube. Beta is uh, the standard inverse temperature. Um, so here are two examples of the spin glass model. Uh, the first one is uh, the Sherton Kirkpatrick model. It has uh, the following explicit form, where the GIG of the so-called disordered randomness, we take this ID. Uh, the standard Gaussian, and in this case, uh, the spins will interact through this two-body interaction. You have a sigma i times a sigma j, um, and uh, the structure function would be just very simple. It's a quadratic function. So we can also generalize this model to uh, the pure PSB model, mixed PSB model. For the pure PSB model, the spins will be interacted through the p-body interaction. Uh, the structure function would be just x to the power of p. Uh, so in spin glass world, we care about the free energy. This uh, free energy is defined as normalized log partition function. Here, the expectation uh, is uh, with respect to the disordered randomness, GIG. Uh, but it's OK if you remove that uh, because uh, this free energy has been proved. That, uh, it has some uh, self-averaging property. And mathematically, this is uh, some concentration uh, of the disorder, uh, Gaussian disorder. So this partition function, as uh, we adding some external field term, this is essentially something we care about in this project. Uh, so this external field H will be uh, greater than or equal to zero, either present or non-present. So for the law of large number of results, uh, the I mean the limiting free energy has been uh, proved a uh, uh, long time ago. Uh, I mean first the physicist uh, Giorgio Parisi using the replica symmetry breaking theory to Give it a variational formula later, and uh, Telegram and Panchenko proved it uh, uh, using different techniques. So, uh, in this, uh, in today's talk, we care about this uh, fluctuations. It's uh, kind of a second order question. So, I would briefly um, uh, mention some historical developments about this uh, fluctuation questions. For example, for the ASK model, the Fluctu fluctuation of a free energy has long been known as Gaussian in the high temperature regime when beta is small. And uh, for H is zero, there's no external field. The first uh, uh, seminar, uh, seminal paper is due to Eisenman, Libris, and Rua. They use uh, the cluster expansion approach to prove that uh, the fluctuation order is Gaussian. And this results also uh, true up to the uh, critical temperature. And uh, for H is non zero, the fluctuation order of the log partition function is a linear order, and uh, they also obey some central limit theorem. This was proved by Guerin in 2009 and 2002. Um, but for ASCII model, it's, uh, the, the fluctuation question becomes very hard to, and the low temperature because this is essentially the difference between the ASCII model and a spher spherical ASCII model. Because uh, ASCII model in the low temperature, the X bit is a full step replica symmetry breaking. It's so some sort of an infinite order fifth transition. But this is not true uh, for the spherical ASCII model. Um, 
when there is no external field, uh, even the fluctuation order is unknown. So the best known bound is due to solve charging in 2019, it proved that uh, the fluctuation order is at least a constant order. And uh, when the external field is present, uh, uh, there's beautiful work by Chen De Panchenko in 2017. Uh, they also worked in a fairly generic setting in the mixed PCB model to prove that if the external field is present, uh, then the fluctuation order is a uh, linear order at all temperature. They also uh, derive a, a central limit theorem using Stein method. And uh, okay, so here I would just also briefly uh, mention some results on a spherical ASCII model. Uh, it's basically something similar to the uh, uh, to what uh, the uh, last speaker described. So for H is now zero, Chen De Penchenko's results implies that I guess. Uh, uh, also recently, the paper by Elizabeth and Bike and uh, other co-authors, uh, they also have something can imply this results. For H is equal to zero, similar techniques, uh, the contour integral representation, steepest descent methods can work out that uh, as Gaussian at high temperature and uh, Tracy William GOE distribution at low temperature. So, uh, so our goal is to understand it, uh, what happens uh, when, when you're changing H from zero to a non-zero constant, what happens there? So it's kind of a, we're heading to understand a more detailed picture about this fluctuations. So we take the external field as uh, this uh, like some weak form uh, and the, for the finite volume system, it's uh, still positive, but uh, uh, will decay to zero as uh, the size of the system uh, goes to infinity. Uh, the main challenges compared to the spherical model or other uh, uh, swing glasses is uh, in the discrete setting, we don't have some nice twos. Uh, and also the configuration space compared to the sphere, the loss of the symmetry, uh, many questions becomes hard. And uh, also if one wanted to prove this uh, uh, results up to the critical temperature, uh, that becomes a super hard, especially when the external field is present. Uh, remember um, when I mentioned the fluctuation results for the ASCII model, when the external is present, uh, Guerra and Tuninali only proved that at a very high temperature. Uh, there's a still something very strange going on, even at high temperature. So here's our results. Uh, we proved that I, in the high temperature regime for beta less than beta zero, beta zero uh, later uh, we're gonna specify this could be, sometimes uh, we could push this to the critical temperature, but uh, when the external field is uh, very strong and this doesn't work. All right, uh, we found three different regimes. Um, this uh, critical exponent of this alpha for the external field is one over fourth. And uh, the supercritical regime, we have the fluctuation order of the log partition function would be just a square root of n is to the power of four. And uh, we proved a central limit statement with the uh, uh, explicit mean and the variance and similarly for the critical and a subcritical case. So, uh, in this Assyrian, uh, we, we can find that uh, the uh, fluctuation order in the critical and the subcritical regime, they basically are the same, it's just a uh, constant order. Uh, but the, in, in the supercritical regime, it becomes uh, the square root of uh, NH2 to the power of four. And uh, also in the subcritical and the critical regime, we can really push uh, this beta zero to the critical temperature. But uh, in the supercritical case, uh, this is very hard. Um, so I would just uh, give it a more detailed picture. We have a couple of uh, different proofs. Uh, so here, this picture would be roughly from the so-called cluster expansion approach. It's combinatorial technique. So um, what we have turned is uh, this uh, log partition function. This can be roughly uh, decomposed as two clusters. The first, one, the first one is a loop cluster. This was uh, proved originally due to Eisenman and Libris in 1987 when the axonal field is uh, is missing. There's no external field. They only have this loop cluster. Uh, when we adding some external field, we found that uh, there's new cluster uh, emerge. Uh, this is so-called path cluster. And also they have this uh, scaling uh, part of uh, due to the external field. And, uh, and uh, this decomposition is essentially uh, uh, capture the behavior of the log partition function. We found that in the subcritical regime, the partition function it behaves in nearly as a zero external field case, which means that the fluctuation order mean and the variance are they're basically same as a zero external field. 
And uh, from this decomposition, we can see that, uh, so the only the loop cluster dominates uh, the uh, contribution of the log partition function. And the critical regime, now this uh, past cluster, they're really getting bigger and uh, they play the same contribution. Basically the loop cluster is O1 and uh, the past cluster is also O1. So that's very nice. And also that's why we uh, see um, in, the, in, the, in the variance part, uh, I don't list the mean and the variance part, they, they have uh, some uh, sum of one part and uh, the other part is essentially some independent sum. Uh, but in the supercritical regime, this decomposition is, uh, is not true anymore because uh, for some technical reason, heuristically speaking, uh, when we do the cluster expansion techniques, uh, the decomposition is really depends on the distribution of the spins. So in the supercritical regime, the spins, um, especially for the mean value would be nonlinear function. This is somehow described by the uh, Taulis Anderson polymer equation spin glass literature. So, um, that's uh, the heuristic reason why the supercritical regime, this decomposition is not true anymore. So I would just briefly mention some of the approaches we have used. Um, in the subcritical regime, we have a, a direct proof. The direct proof is kind of an extension of the second moment method. Uh, so it's basically proved that the log partition function has no difference. And also the cluster expansion uh, approach, uh, from that perspective, we can see that only the loop cluster as making uh, essential contributions. And uh, also we have the quadratic coupling approach. This is kind of something, uh, if you want to derive something about its free energy, um, you have to control uh, the overlap. Uh, this, this part is kind of a technical and it's a long story. So I'm not gonna mention more. Uh, but the important part is all of those approaches can work up to the critical temperature. So uh, in the critical regime, we have the cluster expansion and the quadratic coupling. Quadratic coupling is depends on the control of overlap. And it seems that it's overlap that behaves a little differently, even at a high temperature. When the external is field is a strong, um, after some uh, intermediate temperature, the overlap has exponential growth. So that, that's why for the quadratic coupling, we can only uh, turn to some results at a very high temperature. But for a cluster expansion, that decomposition is very nice. And uh, we, uh, we, we have the, fluctuation results. In the supercritical regime, the cluster expansion doesn't work. We uh, adapted the interpolation schema to obtain the fluctuation at a very high temperature. So uh, we mentioned that uh, this, this different methods, uh, for example, like the, the quadratic coupling interpolation schema, this can work for more generous spin glass models. There's not just for SK. For example, like mentioned here is pure even P-spin models. I mean, even for mixed even P-spin and uh, the so-called Mali species ASCII model and also including spherical model because uh, in that case, we just need to control the overlap. It doesn't uh, really depends on the configuration space. And, uh, but as a cluster expansion uh, can only for the ASCII model, if you work on different models, uh, the technique would be a little different. Um, but it's a nice, nice uh, thing as it can work for general disorders. We don't require any Gaussian. And uh, finally, we want to mention that uh, there's an uh, uh, interesting part for the cluster expansion approaches. Uh, finally, we got this decomposition of the clusters and we apply this model variable sign method to prove the central limb theorem. And this part actually can give it a more transparent picture about the combinatorial analysis uh, than the Eisenman and Libris data in 1987. So finally, here are some uh, uh, related results in spherical models. The first one is uh, basically due to uh, our last speaker. The second one is uh, some geometric uh, approach about they were studying uh, the energy landscape using the cast rise formula to, to study the complexity. Because in the spherical setting, the Hamiltonian is just a smooth random function. You can apply the most theory to compute the number of critical points. They find uh, there's a transition with respect to the external field. That, uh, before that, uh, there's uh, topological trivialization regime. After that, uh, the energy landscape becomes complicated. And finally, our results matches uh, the results of turning the spherical model in high temperature. All right, uh, thanks for your attention. I will stop here and take questions.